So firstly, when you would decide to join us, uh, you would become the student of the SG Warsaw School of Economics. And of course, as being the student, you will have a chance to actually access all the SGH resources. Um, that means uh, the library, the electronic databases, um, uh, the contacts that are available at the SGH Warsaw School of Economics. So everything what we have at hand for regular students. Um, I put here a beautiful picture of the SGH library. I know that, especially in the pandemic times, uh, nobody visits the libraries, but I'm just letting you know that this is one of the um, actually most beautiful buildings um, in our uh, campus, so it's actually worth seeing. But nevertheless, you'll have also the access to uh, the electronic databases, so everything is available also online, so you won't be forced to actually visit the library. Uh, if you uh, uh, won't have time or if you simply don't want to do this. Secondly, in this program, you'll have a chance to specifically um, explore the contemporary dimension of the of the diplomacy, especially economic diplomacy. And I'm always telling that to those who actually believe that it's going to be more about, you know, glasses and dresses program. It's not this way. <laughs> I mean, that's not the way it works. Of course, there is diplomatic protocol, um, a special course uh, devoted to that issue. But in general, that's about economic issues connected with diplomacy. It's not only about diplomacy. So we put uh, here a strong emphasis uh, on the economic content of contemporary diplomacy. Um, then one of the issues that we um, very much uh, um, uh, also uh, emphasize is that we want to deliver knowledge and practical insights. So as you'll see in a minute, uh, majority of our lecturers um, and, lec and, and courses or the lectures itself, these are not only classes that are devoted to, I don't know, get, getting the knowledge itself, but also we focus very much on giving you practical insights on how that actually works. Because at the end of the day, this is what the students expect to have uh, and to get from postgraduate uh, studies. And something what I value very much, uh, skills training. So you'll see that again in a minute in the program description uh, that uh, there's a huge block of classes uh, that is devoted to skills training. And that includes uh, negotiations, both bilateral and in the multilateral for us, uh, but also public speaking um, classes, or the classes connected to product management or managing dispersed or virtual teams, which is of special importance, especially in the times of COVID and um, uh, the work that is uh, so much digital nowadays. Um, you'll be studying in our program under the supervision of business practitioners uh, and experienced diplomats and recognized academia representatives. What do I mean by that? So our program is a combination of, as said before, practical insights, and that is delivered by people who, on daily basis, work with business, uh, by experienced diplomats with um, years of actually experiencing diplomatic services and activities, but also one of the best academia representatives, meaning one of the best, uh, I mean, those who are the most recognized in their actually uh, fields of, um, of studies. Um, we'll be doing this program this year in the online mode. So we've decided to go online because we believe that diplomacy itself is very international and all the issues uh, connected with the pandemic were forced to become digital. So we believe that this is a necessity actually nowadays. Apart from the fact that I'm a huge fan, actually, of online classes, so, like this is uh, this is another um, another reason. Um, we very much appreciate um, the evaluation service from our students from previous uh, from previous editions. So uh, you know, there's a um, check and balance actually uh, situation. So if we get the uh, information from our students that some of the courses that we had or some of the teachers that we worked with 
uh, was not the best suited for them. So we decided to change those classes or to um, to start cooperation with different um, with different teachers. So in this sense, this program is all the time uh, improved. So you can be sure that we are doing our best to actually go into um, uh, one of the um, best uh, postgraduate uh, studies, uh, probably here at SKH. Then uh, last but not least, I think that um, we are kind of a student friendly team <laughs> and um, we are experienced team. So um, Anya has uh, for, a new, for a number of years worked with uh, postgraduate uh, programs. So she knows how to run uh, on the organizational uh, level such programs. So you can be sure that at each step you will get a very good administrative support uh, and that she will actually make your life as easy as it is possible in the online mode. Um, and she will, mm, I would say, fix the issues as soon as possible. That, that's how I know her. Um, I have also worked in that program in a different position uh, for the last three years. So in this sense, we've been there and uh, uh, we've been doing that for, uh, for some time. Um, so how the program looks like? Well, you do have those three blocks, um, but apart from that, so those three blocks include courses. Apart from those courses, this year, due to the fact that we do have this online mode, we plan to have side events. What does it mean? I mean, we want to have like the networking possibilities for the students or the meetings uh, with the diplomats uh, that will not be the content uh, of the course, uh, of the courses that you'll be taking. So apart from the courses, you will have additional possibility to network among the group that you're in, uh, because this is one of um, one of the reasons why people very often join the postgraduate studies. And then secondly, you'll have a possibility to also meet different diplomats uh, during um, uh, some uh, digital coffee uh, uh, coffee meetings. That, that's how I'd prefer to call it. Um, so apart from that, as said before, our program is divided into three blocks. The first one, these are uh, introductory, uh, introductory courses. I mean, they are um, a necessity, I would say, because um, you need to have a strong background in international economics if you want to understand how the world economy actually works. Uh, and believe me, I've seen it myself that this is a really necessity. Then you'll have an introduction to economic diplomacy, and that's a course that will show you how in contemporary world economic diplomacy looks like. Then in the second block, we put a strong emphasis on so-called specialization courses. And in here, you'll have the issues that are placed high on the policy agenda. And this is what we've observed in contemporary economic diplomacy. So, uh, I mean, those of you who either worked or who maybe plan to work um, in the foreign service know that international competitiveness is, I would say, uh, ranked uh, very, very high when it comes to uh, the foreign policy issues. Nations branding, another uh, topic, uh, but also environmental conflicts uh, in the world economy and the solutions. So we are just before the COP26 um, in Glasgow and we know how the world is actually paying, mu how much attention is being paid to environmental issues, uh, especially nowadays. We do have also in this uh, block, a um, set of classes that is connected with the European issues. Since we're in the European Union, we'd like also to, um, to give you a flavor of the lobbying process in the EU, of the decision-making process in the EU, but also antitrust law and policy or challenges that are connected with the Eurozone. So I think that in those classes, everybody can find something uh, for themselves. Uh, when it comes to the third block, uh, here you have a skills training uh, that I was describing before. And as you can see, there's a class on international negotiations, diplomatic protocol, 
public speaking, uh, managing diverse and virtual teams, or the cross-cultural management that is specifically delivered from the U.S. perspective. Um, why I'm say, saying that this is from the U.S. perspective, because um, actually uh, the uh, team of the teachers that, that is delivering those classes is international. I mean, we do have professors from uh, Germany. We do have also professors from U.S. So you can be sure that you will be getting, I would say, firsthand experience uh, um, in terms of the international uh, issues. Um, so this is how the program uh, looks like. Uh, now let's move to how the classes are organized. So um, we do meet every two weeks. So we plan to start at the very beginning of uh, October. Uh, by the way, this preliminary schedule is available on the website, so we can easily um, have a look. Um, so we meet, as said before, every two weeks, and usually somewhere around um, I would say the end of May, uh, there's a uh, final examination, um, and I would say the whole program ends. So what does it mean? Probably, I think that it's going to be um, uh, so 21st or 22nd of May, you will be uh, taking this final examination, which is oral, and of course it's going to be in the digital mode, uh, in the online forum, uh, and then um, uh, if uh, you uh, get the grade, um, 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 if you pass it, then you'll get a diploma. Um, the graduation ceremony, depending on the circumstances, might take place either uh, in May or um, in June or the beginning of September. If that is to be decided later, but we'll see. Okay, And we're very actually open to um, scheduling that also to September because this is um, how it usually works. Um, so how the classes look like? Well, you need to get up uh, quite early in the morning <laughs> on Saturdays, but it's not that early. <laughs> it's uh, 9.50. Um, so we start 9.50 on Saturdays and 8 o'clock sharp on Sundays. Um, so why there is this difference? Usually, and this is my experience, people want to have a little bit of rest on, rest on Saturday morning, so they don't want to get up that early. <laughs> So that is why we start like around 10 and on Sundays we start at 8 so that you will have some uh, of the afternoon uh, to yourself, right? Um, so each day you can expect to have three to four lectures. Each lecture, this is together 90 minutes. So sometimes we would break 45 minutes times two, right? That depends on the lecturer and on the group. Um, so usually two, three lectures a day. Um, I'm saying usually because you might have weekends when you're going to have four lectures and you might have those when you're going to have three. That depends. Uh, and of course, I said before, we were very thrilled that this year we're going to move fully online. Uh, so we'll be using the Microsoft uh, Teams uh, software uh, based on the SDH. Uh, license, um, so we'll be operating within uh, that uh, uh, within that framework. We put strong emphasis on having uh, interactive classes, and we believe that this is uh, one of the best issues in in actually uh, the online mode. Um, so that can be done, uh, and I'm always telling that to my students that I need their I don't need their bodies, I need their heads. So this is actually the necessity of the online mode, and um, we hope to do it um, again this year. What about the course merits? Um, so you're granted the merits for uh, each course um, based on your performance, but um, there are no grades. There is only pass or not pass. Uh, so each lecturer actually individually decides um, how um, the uh, students will be getting course merits. Sometimes this is an active participation in the classes. Sometimes this is another task. Sometimes this is um, well, some kind of test. 
uh, another time that might be a uh, conversation. And that, again, depends on the choice of, um, of the lecturer. So they do have um, like the liberty, I mean, the teacher has the liberty to uh, design uh, the way that student is, students are granted um, course merits. And there's an important issue before the graduation. So you have to have um, uh, merits for uh, all of the courses. So it means that if you want to graduate, if you want to get the diploma, if you want to be admitted to, uh, if you want to sit the final examination to take it, you need to pass all courses. If not, then you'll be granted uh, additional possibility to do so, but probably not in May or June, uh, maybe in September. So this is actually, uh, that depends on your actually ability to, uh, um, to devote to, uh, to the classes. When it comes to the final examination that I've been describing um, so much, so that usually takes the, the, the oral form. So it means that there's an oral examination. Usually there are two or three people in the commission. There's a program director and one or two teachers that uh, have been working in the program. And then the student gets two or three questions from the classes, so from um, uh, the whole uh, program. Mm, I think that, well, um, that may take up to 45 minutes per person uh, because we do talk a lot. So we want to make sure that, uh, that you understand the issues that were included in the courses. Uh, when it comes to timing, as said before, this is usually somewhere around May. So uh, this time the final examination takes place. And the graduation ceremony, as said before, this is the ceremony that is connected with the uh, uh, with, uh, awarding, awarding uh, of the diplomas. So that may take place either in June or in September. So that uh, depends and that will be um, uh, decided uh, later on. Um, when it comes to the registration uh, procedure, I don't know how many people in the room are those who may be registered, but they are still considering whether to join or not. But those of you who have not, so there's a, um, you have here the link. This is the website. Um, so it's sghan.vav.pl slash PSED, like Postgraduate Studies uh, Economic Diplomacy. Uh, and there's a tab register online on your uh, right um, hand side. Um, once you open that, you'll see um, two boxes. One of them, this is Registracia in Polish. The system is uh, fully in Polish. So uh, uh, I'd like to go through this um, to make sure that the English speaking uh, uh, guests feel comfortably with that. So this is the registration. Uh, this is uh, logging into the system. So as of now, that does not uh, um, concern you that much. So the re registration or the registration uh, process is available here. And again, this website is available only in Polish. But so, and um, we we've done a lot to actually um, help our students uh, to register. So you can either translate it yourself, and this is actually how that looks like when you translate it. Uh, through the system, uh, but you can also always ask for our assistance. And we've done it, we've been there, we know how it is. So uh, if you would encounter such problems, just let us know, me or Anya, and we'll help you with this. Um, now, the uh, foreign diplomas and uh, the registration into the system. So um, when it comes to those of you who are from Poland or from the European Union or who have graduated from the universities with which SGH has uh, uh, an agreement, there's no problem with the recognition of the diploma. For those of you uh, who are the holders of the diplomas uh, from the universities with SGH does not have such an agreement, will have to go through the process of the diploma recognition. So in order to do this, you'll have to submit either master's or bachelor's uh, uh, diploma 
with a transcript of records. Sometimes, this is um, depending on the country and on the university, that's not the transcript of records or the transcript of courses, but it's rather a general opinion of the diploma. So it depends on the university that you graduated from. Additionally, uh, to this foreign diploma and the transcript or the general opinion, you'll have to submit a translation into Polish of both documents, and that has to be sworn or certified uh, translation. So it's important to actually have them uh, translate, both of them uh, translated into, um, into Polish. Um, an important issue, it may take up to 30 days. We are very flex flexible in this, but um, this is a quite, I would say, long procedure. Um, so like this one month period, this is the time that we, let's say, reserve for the foreign diploma recognition. It does not have to last that much, but it may. So just to be uh, honest with you, uh, you need to know that um, before deciding for the program. Then, um, once the, the diploma is recognized by the SGH, uh, you can actually uh, uh, pay the tuition fee. Tuition fee amounts to um, 7,500 zloty. This is, I think, around 1,500 uh, euros, um, something around that. Uh, and you can either pay the whole amount at once, or you can pay uh, in two installments. Um, the first one has to be paid once you register, but the second one can be paid um, till the, by the end of January uh, 2022. So if, if you want to divide this payment into two installments. So each of the installments has to be uh, equal. So it's 3,000 3, lotte, um, 750. Uh, so there's such a possibility um, to, to do this. But then there's a uh, delivery of the documents. Um, after receiving the payment, you will get uh, the information from the registration system that you have to do this. Um, and this condition for the successful completion of uh, the admission process is this delivery of uh, the complete set of original documents. So you need to include the registration form that is available in the documents tab in the registration system um, and the originals of the documents that are attached in the system for the inspection. That usually refers to the diplomas that you are um, putting into the system. Um, and we've encountered a number of situations uh, uh, with foreign diplomas. Um, and we know that sometimes you do have only one copy of that. So um, if you do have such a situation, um, you please contact us. We will assist you um, in every possible manner uh, to make it possible um, to attend the program um, and um, submit the original document to us. But you have to let us know about the situation and we'll do whatever is possible, uh, whatever we can do uh, to help you uh, with this. Uh, so that's the delivery of the documents. Um, so those documents can be delivered in two ways. The first is you can do that in person. Uh, you can um, consult uh, Mrs. Karolina Nivet and here's her uh, email address. This is also available on the website. Uh, or you can send it by uh, traditional mail or a courier to the address of the Warsaw School of Economics that is available here. Um, and again, that's also available on the website, so um, it's not actually that important to put it down. Uh, in case of any troubles, any problems, please contact uh, uh, me or Anya so we can uh, help you with this. So uh, to briefly sum it up, uh, what, what kind of documents you need to have in order to register to the program. So first you need to enter the uh, website 
then you need to scan your bachelor or master's um, degree and then you need to wait for the foreign diploma recognition if that's the case if not those um, who've graduated from uh, the universities that SGH has the agreement with uh, probably at this point uh, will have no further um, let's say responsibilities apart from delivering documents and this is it um, yeah, and I think that um, this is it as far as this introductory session uh, is concerned. So that took me uh, half an hour. I'm quite a good on time. So this is actually the moment um, when we'd like to uh, start the Q&A session. So we'd like to remind you that you can do this. I mean, you can pose the question in two ways. So firstly, you can type the question in the chat or you can raise your hand so that we can uh, give you uh, the floor. So I hope that your uh, coffee is still warm enough or water is um, uh, still sparkling. Uh, I'm gonna move to Anya so that we can um, work with the questions that you're gonna have. Okay. Answering two questions. So, first one. Okay. Uh, so, the first question from uh, Mrs. Uh, Piat East Is the program confirmed to start, or there is still uncertainty related to the number of participants? Um, yes, the program is confirmed to start. Uh, there is no uncertainty related to the number of uh, participants. I uh, hope that um, this answer is complete for you, Joanna. Is it okay? Yes, thank you. Um, but actually, I have another question, if I may. Yes, go on, please. Okay. Um, so uh, I was wondering, uh, when is the deadline to actually uh, decide whether we go for it or not? Is there any one uh, date... Uh, by when we should have the whole procedure uh, related with the recruitment process completed? Uh, that actually depends much on you and on the diploma that you are holding, right? Because if you are a holder of the Polish diploma, um, then I think that you can... Day before. <laughs> even a day before, but it would be difficult because you need to sign an agreement. Yes. So I think like... like the latest, I would say, two weeks before the classes start. The, I think that the latest. Right? So it's now. Yeah, so <laughs> it's more or less now. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, Anna, let me ask you, do you have, if it's not a secret, mm -hmm. do you have a Polish diploma or not? Uh, excuse me? Do you have a Polish university diploma yes. or not? Yes, yes, I do a Polish uh, diploma. Uh, it's uh, more my, my concern is more related um, to funding. I mean, there's a, a chance that um, the studies will be funding uh, funded by my company, uh, so that's why there is this um, uncertainty from my end actually when it comes to uh, okay, to got it. So, yeah. Okay, got it. Just drop us an email and uh, we'll talk about that individually, okay? Because okay. you know this mm -hmm. is a private issue, so I don't want to go into detail uh, um, into that. Uh, but just drop me or Anya an email, okay? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So by the way, there's a slide with all the emails. The first one is uh, Anya's. The second one is a general one, and the last one is uh, mine. So you can use. Uh, oh, anyone you actually wish uh, uh, that reaches us uh, both. Um, yeah, we do have also another question, and this is from Nelson. What if I am not available on certain course weekends? Um, so if I got that question correctly, you want to ask what happens if you cannot participate in some of the classes? Is it, is it right, Nelson? Yes, okay, yeah, uh, okay. So thank you for this explanation. So um, in such circumstances, uh, we do advise students to contact the professors directly. And if in, uh, in such situations, uh, the teacher uh, explains or gives additional reading materials or gives the access to some of uh, materials that are available online in order to catch up 
with uh, with the course or with the classes. Um, if that's the case, if, if that refers to the classes uh, that lasted one weekend, for instance, then you will have to also ask the teacher about what are, what is the possibility to get course merits. If it's not the case, uh, if these are the classes uh, that took part or that were stretched to two, three weekends, uh, you, you need to just catch up with the material. So, uh, uh, so in this sense, uh, you don't have to worry that much about getting uh, course uh, merits. Uh, so again, to sum that up, uh, individual contact with uh, the professors uh, in order to ask what was the material covered and whether you need to obtain the course merits. But from my experience, and we also done it in the, let's say, traditional mode, um, uh, teachers, uh, professors are very open to discussion lots of uh, the issues concerning, concerning uh, the studies, so uh, don't be afraid. I mean, I'm also a teacher in different postgraduate programs, and last semester, uh, I was delivering classes online, and apart from my classes that I was supposed to deliver, I spent an hour additional with the students because they wanted to simply discuss some additional issues. So, uh, so that's how actually uh, it works. Um, okay, um, Nada, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, yeah, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, so, Two points, does the course have a regional focus and is there a final year written project? That's a very good question, Nader. Thank you for this. So firstly, is there a final year written project? I should have mentioned that at the very beginning, but uh, I have uh, assumed that by default that you know that the program lasts one year. So this is a two semester program. So you work through one year. There is no written project at the end of the program. Instead of that, you have the oral examination. So this is a substitute of the written project or a written test or however you want to call it. Um, so this is this oral examination. Uh, and does the project, does the course has have a regional focus? Um, we wanted to avoid that actually. <laughs> Because there are so, you know, such a there's such a variety of people who are who have been so far attending the courses that we don't want to focus on a specific region. Thus, we have part of the classes concerning those European regional issues, but we do have also this U.S. component, um, and we do have also a, um, a professor from Germany who is. Uh, giving more, let's say, of, of, of German, but also slash European perspective. Um, so, yeah, by the way, the classes on international competitiveness are delivered by the professor um, from SGH, who is specializing in Asian studies. Um, so, yeah, there is, a, I would say, the globe covered by, uh, by the issues that are uh, included in uh, in the program. Uh, Nada, does it answer your question? It does. Thank you very much. Yes, that's, that's very right. useful. Thank you. From Nada. Oh, I I also see that uh, there's another question. Can the participants use the SGH facilities on the workshop days, being there and online? Um, if you want to use, um, I don't know, the facilities that are open to everybody at SGH, yes. So there's uh, no such a problem. Of course, if you'd like to use a specific room, meaning that you want to enter a room like this, we would have to know that in advance to actually help you with that. Because, um, you know, to enter the room, you need to have it open and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be just at the school premises, um, you want to use, I don't know, um, um, the school premises to sit down with the computer and to work a little bit, it's not a problem. You can go also to the library. Uh, you can use the cafeteria, um, whatever is actually available in here. So, um, so yeah, um, I, I think that it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's very um, useful. Yes, thank you. Uh, just as a okay. practical question, this was if you have a young child, which I do, sometimes weekend, every weekend or every second weekend is not going to be so easy with a young child. So, looking for the location was 
what I had in mind of possibly finding a quiet corner. That's very useful. So the library is open on Saturdays and Sundays, is that right? Library facilities. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, don't worry. I mean, we with Anya have been there. We know how it's with, with uh, little children. We know that sometimes you need a place to work and yeah, <laughs> you can do it. If you'd let us know that you also need a small room, so we'll try to make it work for you. Thank you. So uh, yeah, just let us know. We are all parents. <laughs> Um, all right, so do we have any other questions? Uh, maybe there's somebody who'd like to um, uh, say the question loud. Sorry, no, no. if, if oh, I may. Yeah, yes. yeah go on, please. Just, just to continue what you've said already and you've described eloquently about the qualifications, I come from a university that doesn't issue transcripts. So I have, a, I have a PhD previously from University College London. So I think I need to email you, is that right? And then we can sort it out specifically. Yeah, just let us know what, right. and we will then um, um, decide what to do next because we'll right. need to consult the uh, authorities uh, at our university and uh, they are letting us know uh, whether you, we will have to have some kind of general opinion on the diploma or something else. But as said before, each situation is individual uh, as bad, uh, when it comes to diplomas. So that is why we're kindly asking to let us know um, if you're submitting the foreign diploma so we can assist you and we can make this process work for you and for us quickly, right? Uh, because this is the 20th of uh, September uh, yes, and you're starting in July. <laughs> yeah, in, in three weeks more or less, right? So, um, so time is of the essence. Um, so just drop us an email and we'll see um, what to do uh, next, next and we'll advise on with this, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do we have any other questions? Yes. Hi, hi, hello, uh, I have a question now. Would you recommend this postgraduate studies to someone who's uh, more focused on career shift rather than uh, boosting uh, already uh, in the existing, let's say, experience in uh, international economics? Thank you for this. Um, so actually, uh, I've uh, seen myself during uh, like previous three editions, people who were from such different actually areas uh, that I was at sometimes even amazed myself or surprised myself um, about their interest in economic diplomacy. And then when talking to them, they told me, you know, we are actually um, considering right now a career shift uh, and not always into diplomacy because economic diplomacy is not only about diplomacy. Um, and thus they were uh, uh, attending the, uh, the program. So in this sense, I would say yes, uh, but you need to decide it yourself. So um, based on what you want to do. So uh, of course I cannot use the names, uh, but I can tell you that we had a student who was working, of course we had a number of students from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Poland, Republic of Poland, we had uh, people from different embassies, uh, we had people from different um, uh, um, chambers of commerce, we had also people from um, private business, from um, pharmaceutical companies, we had people from authority that is um, um, supervising um, um, the roads in Poland, roughly. Uh, I don't know uh, how they are called in, uh, in English. <laughs> so the general authority for roads and highways uh, whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's what I can right now just uh, just recall. But uh, I'd like to mention also uh, another important feature, and I think that this is also important when it comes to postgraduate studies. There's always a networking component in the program. So you can 
And I think that students have to do this. They have to network a little bit, maybe to ask uh, other people how it is to work somewhere else uh, and to make new contacts. So this is what I believe is the essence of uh, postgraduate studies when it comes to um, the opportunities that uh, they uh, can offer. Um, I am also uh, in contact with uh, some of uh, the students from previous editions, and I know how they are switching their jobs. So uh, believe it, I mean, some of them are not working in diplomacy. They are not career diplomats, uh, but they are doing different things. Uh, and I know that they were undertaking those uh, core, I mean, classes um, to learn something new, maybe to uh, uh, gain new contacts and maybe consider a change of uh, career path. Um, so yeah, uh, Grzegorz, I don't know if that answers your question. That was a very long description. <laughs> Hope you don't mind it, but I just wanted to tell you, to, to, to give you a full, um, full description of the situation because I've seen it myself and people were asking that question. So uh, yeah, I know that it's important. Is it okay? Yes, thank you. That's a, that's a, that was a good um, answer to my question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have no. other questions? No, Maybe no, somebody no. from the room would like to raise a hand and ask some questions. No, uh, so I don't see it coming. Uh, so guys, uh, I'd like to, uh, I think, briefly uh, sum up our uh, today's meeting. So again, if that's not a course and that's not a program about glasses and dresses. <laughs> so you're gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about uh, diplomatic protocol, yes. But it's more about the economic issues behind uh, uh, contemporary diplomacy. Uh, and uh, um, uh, economic diplomacy uh, as such. So those of you who are not connected or who are not working for the embassies, uh, I don't know, in commercial sections of different embassies, uh, who work for a private industry, uh, private business, um, can also find their place here. I mean, in general, this program is not only designed for diplomats. Um, because that would have to be called diplomatic program. <laughs> so it's, it's not about um, uh, only diplomacy. It gives the possibility for a number of, I would say, uh, professionals to consider networking opportunities, career shifts, or to deepen their knowledge in case of um, uh, contemporary diplomacy, economic diplomacy as such. So if you'd like to um, ask some additional question or you didn't have the opportunity to do so today, just drop us an email um, either to Anya or to me and we'll assist you with that. Also, if you don't feel comfortable with the registration procedure, just again, let us know. We'll help you uh, with this. Uh, to, to finish that meeting, I'd like to use a quote from uh, Virgin James, uh, who've been writing a lot about economic diplomacy, saying that it's more about economic carrots and sticks. And this is what we're going to investigate a lot <laughs> during our course. So what about those, what are those economic carrots and what are those uh, economic uh, sticks? So I'd like to thank you for today's meeting. Um, I think that we'll be, uh, we, we will have a chance with Anya to meet you uh, in the future again online. And I hope that it's gonna be a great journey uh, in the online mode. Um, so thank you for today. Um, and again, hope to see you uh, in the future. Yeah, in the class. Uh, thank you guys and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.